In just a moment, two statements of about equal length will flash on the screen for about two seconds. Try and memorize both of them. Okay, time's up. What did each statement say? And what does this have to do with reading tablature? Both statements had about 100 characters of information to process. And yet that second statement, unless you're a complete savant, is impossible to memorize in that short amount of time, even though it was neatly organized into rows. You can process the first statement and not the second through a process known as chunking. The human brain processes words as individual units. No matter how slow you might read, you don't actually process the words letter by letter. Instead, what you do is you recognize the visual shape of a word and all of its component letters and process that whole thing as a shape. The fastest speed readers are able to process entire sentences or paragraphs as individual shape units. This is how trained musicians read standard notation and process music on the page. They aren't caught up in recognizing and naming individual names of notes as they see it on the page. Rather, they're processing the musical information on the page as a visual shape, and then pairing that shape with muscle memory that knows how to execute that shape on the instrument. The way that we process visual text with our eyes is through a series of what are known as saccades, or rapid eye movements between fixed points on the page. We've known about this since roughly the 19th century, but only recently have researchers found that we actually process musical information the same way. A recent study had musicians read and perform rhythms while a computer tracked their eye movements. You can see here this great graph of the findings of this study when you see the subject moving his eyes from different parts of each measure as he's executing the rhythm. There's something called the perceptual span, or the eye-hand span, which describes the amount of time between reading a piece of information and then executing it. A lot of musicians, especially trained piano accompanists, will actually be reading four or five measures ahead of where they're actually playing. The study that I mentioned calls this the buffer, where music is held for later performance. Now the interesting question is, can we process musical information the same way that we do for standard notation, but in tablature? Can we chunk it or parse it the same way that we do when we're reading words on the page? Tab kind of has a bad reputation among music educators, and there's a few reasons for why this might be. The first is that Tab can't show rhythm, except of course when it can, because it can easily be adapted to show rhythm. The second reason is that you can't actually communicate with other musicians very easily if you're not playing bass or guitar, and those other musicians use standard notation. But the real reason why tablature is not used among professionals goes a little bit deeper than these two complaints. Consider this statement, if you will. Colorless green ideas sleep furiously. This statement means absolutely nothing, but you were able to process it as if it had meaning. In linguistics, there are two things to actually consider. There's the lexical meaning, which is what the words actually mean, and then the grammatical meaning, which is how the words are put together. And this is why we can understand this nonsensical sentence. It's because it makes grammatical sense. The nouns, the verbs, and the adjectives are all where they're supposed to be. Very interestingly, the person that revolutionized linguistics and made this distinction between lexical meaning and grammatical meaning was Noam Chomsky, who was the same Noam Chomsky who would later become a leftist author. The process of recognizing the visual patterns of music, the shapes and the contours and the general musicness of it all is why standard notation works as well as it does. We can see a visual representation of the music on the paper and react accordingly. So if you want to think about it this way, the x-axis represents time and the y-axis represents pitch, so essentially staff paper works the same way as graph paper does. The same way that the visual nature of the graph of a function reflects an underlying order, which is the function itself, the visual nature of standard notation reflects the underlying order order of music itself. On a little bit more of a practical level, standard notation gives us more information with less visual clutter. Instead of being told how to play the music, in other words, put your finger on this fret, we're simply told what the music is. Consider these two examples. In the first example, a trained musician will recognize the general visual shape and apply the key to all the visual shapes and his knowledge of the musical scale and be able to process the whole thing and perform the whole thing very quickly. In the second example, it's the same music, but there's a lot more information that you have to parse. This is why a tab is simply not used that often. As we progress in our learning and we learn more and more patterns and more and more scales and more and more shapes, we don't need to be told how to create the music, we just need to be told what the music is. This is why we can chunk musical information in standard notation and not so much in tab. For a speaker of English, which would you rather see? This, which is just the words themselves, 
or this, which is how to say all of the words. Now, I do use tablature in my own teaching, and the reason for that is by tap's very nature, it shows you how to play something, and that can be very useful as a teacher and as somebody who's learning. But as you learn more and more of fingerings and scales, tab is kind of rendered obsolete by standard notation. Anyway, this has been Adam Neely with Adam Neely's Bass Lessons. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and also please ask any questions you might have of me. I do frequent question and answer videos also. Um, otherwise, I have a new video coming out every Monday. So stay tuned, and until next time, bass. Hey.